that belong to someone else. An example, I like going by churches and, and especially those that I think that, that might come up for sale. But the point is, is that it is lust if it belongs to somebody and, and I want it. And I'm lusting after of it in spite of a, a, a owner being well positioned inside of that place. Do you understand what I'm saying? If, if, if somebody gets a car, you start lusting for their car. I don't want a car. I want his. I want hers. That's lust. Okay? That's a that's, that's good way to look at lust. In the Old Testament, it was called coveting. Coveting. And let me say this. Lust of the eye is directly related to material things. Material things. Some of us have a lot of endearing quality, but we struggle with material things. Because at any time, if God asked us to give it up, then we find out where our heart is. Ooh, I didn't get a lot of amens there. But that's my. But then God said, give it up. It happened with Abraham, with Isaac. You, you want me to give him up? You want me to give him up? And, and sometimes something that the Lord has given you, he will ask you to give it back to him to see what you will do. But with Abraham, this was no lightweight thing. He said, you know, take him to an altar. What? See, God wants to know whether anything he gave you will become him in front of him. Does that make sense? That you put it before him till if he requires it, you have a problem. And you declare something that you normally don't say. That's not God. Amen. Amen. Let me let me, let me move forward. It's gonna get better, y'all. Don't don't look that that bad. Okay. Let me add. It's not wrong to have material things. It's not wrong for you to have what you're wearing, what you drive, what you. It's not wrong. That's not a sin. Amen. And don't let anybody make you feel bad for it. Because some people want to throw guilt on you. You driving like that, and some people still catching the bus. There will always be people catching the bus. And it's not about what you drive. It's not about what I personally have that determines who catch a bus or not. So we'll attach that to people and say, the pastor shouldn't have this. Go. The only know his member needs such and such and that. I'm giving the members what they need when I stand right here and the Bible says God shall all he didn't say I would And I don't step into that place and I don't let you give me a guilt trip. Amen. Come on, come on. You know, no, 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 no. Look to Jesus, the author and okay. Does that make sense? Let me add, again, it's not wrong to have material things, but we must never lose sight of the one who allows us these things. 
It is easy. It's, it's, it, let me say something. It's almost, it almost, it, it's a, it, it, I need to, to say this, it, it, that, that it, I'm just going to shoot it. <laughs> Sometimes it's almost dangerous for people who don't trust God to get blessed with something. Because there, there comes a detachment. That says, I did it without God. I did it doing it my way. So God is not in the equation. So there is nothing that says, I need to serve him. Because what we did, we attribute to our own self. So in essence, you move God out of the equation and, and the devil will dupe you into thinking you're all right moving it like you're moving it. But the word, what does it profit a man? To gain the whole and lose what? His soul. The world, the, the, the world is not worth your soul. How many of you know that? It's not worth your soul. How many of you have had stuff and stuff has left you? And it was stuff you tried to get. You worked to get. You went in debt to get. And now it's not even around. Okay, y'all not gone. And you live for it. You made adjustments for it. I don't know whether people still put stuff on layaway or any of that now, but uh oh, everything gone. Huh? But you pushed back. You made a way for something you say you couldn't do. You did it. That's why I'm getting so, I'm going to stop just pretending like I, I, I ain't going to ask because they got a lot on them. <laughs> they always have a lot on them. Because <laughs> they push for everything they want to do. Come on. You know, I'm not going to say throw something at me when I say something wrong, but I mean, but for right now, just, just release a word. Yeah, okay, Pastor. It is easy to move into ourselves and misplace the center of our existence, God, with the things of and in this world. Let me, let me make a few statements. Abraham was rich. Isaac and Jacob were rich. They were rich from their dad's money. Then they became richer in their own stuff. And then as every generation got richer. Peter, the disciple, was rich. He was an entrepreneur. And he was into the fishing industry. He owned boats. He had a staff. When Jesus was in one of his boats and said, throw the nets down, he was talking to the staff. <laughs> Are y'all here? I don't know why there's, a, why there's a detachment for me. We thought all of them was running around in raggedy rolls full. Barefooted with sandals on and sand between their toes. <laughs> Judas was rich. He was a thief, but he was a banker too. He was into the financial market. He knew what money could do. That's why he knew how much the oil that was being used on Jesus cost. Because he was a financial person. That's a year's worth of. 
See, people that know what stuff is, people into fashion, they know when something show up. That's Lauren. That's Gucci. That's a knockoff. You know, yeah. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? We're dealing with people that had some. Jesus was rich. He was rich from his birth. Who showed up with frankincense? Myrrh. And gold for you. And it wasn't three. The three gifts is what made it into the record. But it was a caravan. Because when they got in trouble, they had enough money to go international and they left town and went to Egypt. And they stayed down in Egypt. Didn't say they worked down in Egypt. They stayed down in Egypt until Herod was, come on. But according to custom, he had to learn a trade. All Jewish kids learned a trade. And Joseph, his stepfather, was a carpenter, so Jesus took up the trade of the family. Going to the year 30, a millennial, he, he started his ministry after he came out of the wilderness. I'm giving you the history. And then as soon as he started his ministry, folk believed in his ministry, and rich women started donating to his ministry. And they made sure he had good clothes. How do we know that? Because at his crucifixion, they gambled for his, which had been, been it, see, let, let's talk about how bad this is. It, the, what they gambled for was a garment that when they started knitting it at the bottom, they didn't stop till they got to the top. It was pricey. It wasn't some. I'll put red on this and patch it with blue and tack a little gold tassel along the side to make it look good. He had on a custom-made garment. So when he stood up to minister, they were already impressed. Ooh, look at Jesus. There's not a friend like the Lowly G, not the poly G. You want to, they want to keep him poor because that's a mindset. We take all the money while you serve Paul G. Jesus' needs were met, all of them. Anytime somebody has control over the fish and say, come on up. Reaching to his mouth, the first just reaching to pay pay your taxes. See, I love Jesus. He don't leave you out of the problem. Pay your taxes, and this is tax season. <laughs> Some of y'all just may be looking for a fish <laughs> with, with a gold coin in his mouth. Maybe it was a 2,000-year-old coin that's worth millions of dollars. I don't know, but it, 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 it'll be enough. But I just want you to, if, if you do find a fish and the coin is in there, remember my taxes. Yeah. Are you out there? Is this making sense to anybody? The issue is not what you have, but what has you. But some stuff got you. It's got you when pastor asks you to tithe and you give me an offering. You work a job, but you can't tithe. Because something in your head is sideways. You think that it's bothering me because you don't tithe. But you're bothering me. And I don't care what happens. We push back. We've tithed for, for it's been. As long as we've been married. And, and, and no matter when it gets tight, God always sees us through. And we don't stress out. We don't go crazy. We just back up. We do what we need to do and, and just keep living it. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how it works, y'all. Trust him. And you don't trust him when it's good times. I can give it today. 
And when it tightens up on you, you say, I, I ain't. That's the time you need to break loose. See, in the world, they're so exact. You don't pay your house no. You won't be in the house. And there is no emotion to it. They don't care who lived there. They don't care how much it is. They don't care what it is. If you don't pay it, you won't, you won't drive it. Don't call the police because they helped them come pick it up. I didn't get a lot of amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The world is exacting. We don't see God. He seems like he's a long way away, so we don't think we have to operate with him. But how are you playing with destiny? I buried a 32-year-old police officer for a 32. And he got up getting ready for work and dropped dead. I know he died on the spot. They pronounced him dead. It can happen. I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm just saying, what are you putting stop? Let's move into the lesson. That's just the introduction. What is the lust of the eyes? I'm glad you asked. The phrase lust of the eyes is found in 1 John 2, 15 through 17. I read it last week and I'll read it again because these are separators. These are things that try to steal your soul. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Everything is New King James. Then down so far that I'm going to give you something in King James. Do not love the world. What did it say? Or the things in the world. That's in case you got confused about the world. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is, it's what? So, so in case you thought I was hard, this is it. If you love material things more than God, The love of the Father is not in you. You replace one love for another. For all All that is in the world for some of the things that is in the world. But he who does the will of God does what? I like that line and I thank God for writing it in there. It said, he who does the will of God abides forever. That means you, you, you hang out with God through eternity. You and you. Your soul hangs out with God forever. While the things of the world, the lust and the things in the world, the materialism in the world passes away. It's done away with. But you get to hang out with God forever. I ask you, what's the better deal? Does anybody see a good deal here? Simply put, the lust of the eyes is the desire to possess what we see or to have those things which have visual appeal.
visual appeal. The coveting of he, he trying to get a good offering today. You're right, I am. Now, <laughs> physical things do not last. They will pass away. They will pass away. I remember as a, as, as a teen, I wanted this certain car. It was a Cutler Supreme, uh, 1975. Baby blue, powder blue, with, with, with a half Landau top. Windows that I didn't have to crank, you know, and, and, and AC, you know, so I didn't have to pretend with my windows up when I didn't have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did I teach you how to drive? They still charging me with that to this day. But the point is... I wanted that car, and I, I and and I I saved for it. I just it was brand new, and I rode my bike down there to to, to Rosedale uh, 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 Oldsmobile on Grand River to get it. I paid money every week. I got paid. Don't tell me when there's something you after you can't do diligent. I rode my bike. Wasn't no shame because I knew one day I was gonna ride back. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm talking to some young people. That, that's what you do. Fake it till you make it. You know, I, <laughs> the last time I rolled down there, I said, I said, I got a few more payments to make. I was just making them to, to, to the dealership. I was, I was doing my down payment. And the man had some keys laying on there. Ready for your car. I said, yeah, I will be in on the phone he said bring that Oldsmobile you know how you get excited but you don't want to act a fool <laughs> moms got sweaty I said Lord something, something happening <laughs> brought the car around it was all waxed up and cleaned up Oh, I don't know what happened to the bike. <laughs> I think they called me late and said, man, come get your bike. <laughs> Are y'all there? Does this make sense to anybody? And, and, but what I'm saying, the point is, is that was in 75. This is 2019. I don't want a 1975. Are y'all there? See, what was exciting and new, old and gone. Where are all this? Run with that. The Ten Commandments address the lust of the eyes in its prohibition against coveting command. Exodus 2017. Y'all taking up too much of my time. Exodus 20, 17. You shall covet your, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox. And I know New King James says his donkey, but King James said, or oh, oh, his ass. Or oh, anything. That is your neighbor's. <laughs> Come on up. Y'all drop down somewhere. Come on, come on out of there. This is clearly stated as coveting includes a desire to have people, possessions, or status. Satan used the lust of the eyes as one of the avenues for temptation for Eve. I'm going to go back to Eve again. I'm not giving her a bad rap. Because the rap is still on Adam. Because that's who the law went to. 
Come on, come on. Is that fair? Leave her alone. She'll cool off in a minute. Genesis 3 and 6. Genesis 3 and 6. Come on, come on. I don't have much time, don't you? Genesis 3 and 6. And it said there, so when the woman, what's the next word? What did she do? She hadn't touched anything. She hadn't eaten anything. And before you get in trouble, it's, it's, it's what you're looking at. That's the title of the message. What are you looking at? I don't think I gave it to you, but it's what are you looking at? So when the woman that the, the, the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to thee. So it's your seeing that gets you into trouble. Come on, come on. What you looking at? Ooh, y'all listening? Don't get distracted. Leave your mom alone. Don't get distracted. Oh my God. She's she's it was, that it was pleasant to the eyes in a tree, desirable to make one wise. That's the secondary. But she got in trouble with what she saw. And her appetite, her mouth got wet. It just, just She took its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. She gave it to him. Satan used a visual image to help entrap her. It started with her eyes. He still does it today. He still does it today. Got a little story I want to share with you. It was written by Drew Anderson. It was in Tucson, Arizona, Reader's Digest, and it's about lust. And in the open up, it said, while my wife and I were shopping at a mall kiosk, a shapely young woman in a short, form-fitting dress strolled by. My eyes followed her. Without looking up from the item she was examining, my wife asked, was it worth the trouble you're in? Sit up, Leroy. <laughs> Satan tried a similar tactic on Jesus. One of his temptations in the wilderness was to make Jesus covet earthly power. The same thing he used on Eve, he used on Jesus. The same thing he used on Jesus, he used the same old bag of tricks. He don't have any new ones. It's only five or less, and they still working like a charm. Are, are y'all there? Matthew 4 and 8. And this is the second time he tried it. This is while Jesus was in the wilderness before he launched his, his public ministry. And it said there, again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and their glory, all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. See, that's what he wants is your worship. Oh, God. And that's the stuff you don't want to give up freely to God. But that's what the devil wants. Ooh. Fall down and worship. Then Jesus said, this is how you kick devil butt. 4, 10, and 11. Away with you, Satan. Resist the devil. And this is the, this is the method that Jesus used, and it's the method you must employ. Away with you, devil. Read those next four words. All right. After four, it is written, have something biblical to say back to him. 
What has God said that you can use to fight the devil? You can't fight him by saying, cussing him out. I can't tell that story. I had a bad story about cussing the devil. But it is said, he said, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil did what? Then the what? And behold, angels came and ministered to him. Why? Because, why did the angels show up? Because angels are on guard to do the bidding of the Lord. And the word is what gives them marching orders. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I heard a preacher say today, we got the, our angels are in the unemployment line because we don't give them anything to do. We think we can say, angel, get this, but they only move at the command of the word of God, which is the voice of God, and then they move. Jesus defeats him with the word of God. We must follow Jesus' example, and in the power of the Holy Ghost, resist the lust of the eyes. Here's a danger and the warning regarding lust. James 1, 15 through 18. Anybody getting blessed a little bit? And it said there, then when lust has conceived, God used a whole conception mindset of a, of a seed hitting a womb and, 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 and like, like a woman and, and incubating, and then that conception gives birth. Then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. The baby of lust is sin. Well, woo, it starts somewhere. And sin, when it grows up, it is finished. Brings forth death. Because that's what sin does. When it grows up. Because sin don't kill you at first. Are y'all there? Do not err, my beloved brethren. But, but here's the good news. Just so you won't go all the way down. Come on back up. Here's the good part. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from, is from where? Is from God. Come on. You ought to get happy at that. And, and, and cometh down from the Father of lights in whom is no variableness. There ain't no variation in it. His gift is a gift. And it's a good gift. He don't give a gift and, and it's got no side stuff with it. Don't have an aftertaste. Don't have a, a payment plan. Neither shadow of turning of his own will begot he us with the word of truth. He gave birth to us with truth. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creation. He birthed us so we could be a first fruit of creation. Not to death, but to life. Not to death, but to life. The world is full of eye candy, glamour, gaudiness, materialism, beckons with its promise of happiness and fulfillment. A media saturated society bombards us with. With, with, with advertising campaigns that might as well say, covet this. Covet this. I, I, was, I, I was somewhere yesterday, and I, I was watching some blue jeans. I wasn't coveting, but I was watching some blue jeans. And this is what, what, what I saw. I didn't understand why it can be cold outside. And, and I know we want to do it, but, but summer is coming, and summer and early fall, late spring, they might work. 
But why are we wearing straight cutouts? And then we're wearing an overcoat up top. Lust attempts to pull not only your flesh, but your soul from God. The enemy detests your potential. You have potential. Put your hand over your chest and say, I have potential. God gave me potential. The enemy hates your potential. That is the life with God forever. Your potential is you are destined, once you become God's, to be with him forever. And when you get onto the page that I belong to God, you will act like you belong to God. I belong to God. Proverbs 23 and 5, it says, Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. Riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. How many of you know that riches sometimes got wings? Okay, okay, y'all, y'all not with me. How many of you know paychecks got wings? <laughs> Woo! Woo! Our goal is not to keep up with the Joneses or the endless pursuit of trappings of glittering magnificence. Instead, our goal is Philippians 3.10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and of our who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Our eyes are set on Jesus. Our view is eternity. Going back up to the top, and I'm, I'm done. 1 John 2 and 17 said, And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides how long? How long? How long is forever? How long is forever? How long is that forever? How long is that forever? From everlasting to you are God. How long is forever? Your 70 years is not forever. Your 32 years are not forever. Your 65 years are not forever. How long is forever? How long is forever? How long is that forever? Blessings to you in Jesus' name. My God from Zion. You are my God forever. Forever and ever. You're my God forever. So I do want you to make decisions to honor God. Along with some of the things that separate you from God, your money, I'm, I'm talking to you. Because I'm telling you, the earth is the Lord. The fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. You need to serve the creator more than the creation. Wrap your head around it. Trust him for all things. And all of us need help. Some of these areas. Every one of us.
Father, bless the people. Thank you for a sure word in this season. Touch us. We thank you for everything that you bless us with. But God, we know it's from you. It's in you we live, move, and have our being. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless every believer in this house. Transform us by the word, God. Transform us by the word. We thank you for your mercy that keeps us. Oh, you good to us today. You allow us to stand and we thank you. We appeal to you for help. Bless this people, bless this house, bless us, bless me. We repent for our resistance to your word. In Jesus' name. But as we take up our offering today, the word spoke to you and 